Welcome to Survival Russia. The minor snowstorm today. That over there was a <laughs> an anthill under the snow. There's a lot of them here. But anyway, today we're gonna take a look at the survival rigs. I had some requests on Facebook and this and that, and uh, I'll show my survival rig, my winter survival rig. So let's go to a place a little bit more comfy than here. And uh, yeah, hang on. Hello guys, welcome back. This is the day after. Yesterday weather went from bad to worse. So uh, yeah, here we are. Here's the rig. Looks like this. On the other inside. See, just a build pad rig basically. Eight strap, tra -la 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 -la. standard stuff. So let's go over the content of the pouches, but uh, first let me say a few things here. So what kind of survival situation is it we will normally find ourselves in? <clears throat> It'll be something like loss of navigation, loss of compass, loss of GPS unit or minor injury like sprained ankle, dislocated knee or something, something that will result in an extended stay, as I would like to call it. But normally we will not be further in that we will be able to walk out, except when we're on snowshoes, skis, snowmobile, ATV and this and that. Then we are bringing ourselves further, further into the forest or wilderness or whatever, then we can uh, reasonably walk out at the same time. As example, last winter I was in the big forest on my Canadian snowshoes and uh, the right snowshoe, the, the magnesium tennis racket style, the right snowshoe broke. I didn't notice until I came home, but I was 10 kilometers, that's about 7-8 miles into the forest and uh, if it had broken critically there, it would literally, literally have taken me days to get out because there has been snow up to here and without snowshoes it's gonna be a problem. And yeah, you can make your own snowshoes and so on, but uh, they will not last very long. First little pouch here, whole shotgun shells. This is some uh, Magnum, box shot, triple odd, this and that. For big and small game, mag pouch. So the little pouch up here. Some of you might have seen it before, contains food only. It's quite a lot of buckwheat here, it lasts for a long time. Oatmeal, wet napkins, frozen wet napkins, more oatmeal. This is the pig meat, it's also frozen. This is 325 grams, should be something about 12 ounces or something, maybe more. This is a dehydrated soup, tastes awesome, good to mix into the buckwheat. Nuts and fruits. Two bags of dried fish, Russians will laugh because this is normally a beer snack. But for me, it's a survival snake. On to the next pouch. This is the possible bags. This is uh, they have some uh, have some uh, items that will always be there, and some will change and this and that. This is not complete today. But for example, we have some gloves. Mess kit, some things in. I'm not gonna open that. Space blanket. Another can of pig meat. So it's 650 grams of pig meat. It's quite a lot actually. In the lid here I have some snares, but as I said, that's for another video. A later video. But uh, this pouch is similar to I like, can add things and take things out. But, um, according to what kind of trip I'm on and so on. Mesquite is of course important because I'm not carrying any water because in the winter water is all around me. Other little pouch here. It's 
the silky saw because they make the best saws. This is the Pocket Boy 170. Awesome saw. I'd rather be stuck with the silky saw than a hatchet or something like that. And we have a this is an expedition. So this is a tool pouch and survival equipment pouch. It's actually a Rolly Poly pouch. They're quite good, they're really sturdy. But we have some frozen rim oil, more frozen rim oil, electrical tape, fishing line, fishing equipment with fishing line in it. We have some chaga, tinder fungus, a strike with the flint and a striker. So here we have a piece of flint. I brought this flint all the way from my homeland Denmark because here you will not find a rock anywhere. We are at an old lake bed. Here's a Lenski sharpener. Iodine, it's not frozen. Weird. Sewing kit. File. Espit stove. Mini espit stove. It's another blanket. There's a compress, wound compress. A spoon. Water purification tablets. And a magnifying lens. So that's the survival tool pouch and over here. Well used DK2. Is the best knife in the world? No. But it's rugged, it's robust. And I trust it. So uh, that's the rig knife. And here we have a canvas top. This is uh, identical to this one here, it's 180 by 180 centimeters, a little bit less than six, six feet. It's not the biggest top or cover, but it's uh, sturdy and it can be used as a poncho and uh, very, very tough. So uh, I trust that one and the Swiss Army wool blanket. Food is really, really underrated. That is going to be the difference between surviving and not especially in the winter you can hunt and you can trap and all this but that is for a different video because in these videos i try to give you guys a real perspective on uh, what is real survival about it's not like walking around with a little pouch and a tea candle and a space blanket and uh, it'll save your life right it's not how it is for material and equipment and this and that side I personally look a lot into what the guys used on the Eastern Front uh, in the Second World War, both Russians and Germans and Finns, because uh, you could say that was people being in a real survival situation many, many times uh, with bad supply lines and they had to make do with what they had. <laughs> but in extended stay you will need some equipment because it will make you faster. I mean, if you have to build a, if you have to build a shelter every time you have to sleep and this and that, it's, this takes time, and and uh, debris shelters and so on, they're generally anyway useless, unless you spend a lot of time building them. So they're not you, so, so they're not useful for survival or emergency situations really. So thank you for your time. Thank you for watching. Check the links in the description and uh, go like Survival Russia on Facebook if you want to know what's going on outside YouTube and all this stuff. And as always, get out and train, get it done, and see you next time here in Russia.